Welcome to Pocus Geek. Uh, if you've never joined us before, we try to do some short educational videos for point of care ultrasound. It uh, doesn't matter your specialty, but essentially uh, anyone that's using uh, point of care ultrasound at the bedside, uh, these are pretty short and cut and dry lectures here or discussions. So in this one, um, a lot of my learners have struggled over time to understand how to diagnose pneumothorax. And we need to remember that the absence of lung sliding does not always mean that there's a pneumo there. Uh, that can be due to a history of pleurodesis, breath holding, a bleb in somebody with COPD. You may not see lung sliding in them. Uh, this, the purpose of this lecture is to be able to definitively diagnose a pneumothorax by finding the lung point and gain an understanding of that. So we're going to proceed with um, this lecture here and just talk about it real quick. So. If we imagine this is what the, the chest um, looks like, we have a patient supine, and where we're going to see that fluid collect is here anteriorly, like we see with the label there. Now, this is why our sensitivity varies so widely with chest x-ray, because if somebody's supine, you still have lung markings all throughout. If this was a patient here, we would see... Um, we would see lung markings all the way throughout. And so if we look here, we can see that all the way through here, if we have a line coming, it's going to hit lung at some point. So as the x-ray passes through, it's going to show lung all the way through. It doesn't matter that you have that little pocket of air up there in front where the pneumothorax is. And so we've really got to pay attention to this. Uh, in our trauma patients, it's very typical that we won't see that when they're supine or our critical patients that are lying flat um, when we do it. Now, that doesn't mean if they're upright, it's always going to be present either, but um, it is more likely to be seen. But still, the sensitivity is not 100%, whereas with ultrasound and good technique, we can approach a sensitivity of 100%. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in here, and we're going to really look at what we call the lung point. So the lung point is what we actually look for in ultrasound. Absence of lung sliding does not mean that there is a pneumothorax, like I said earlier. What we need to see and look for is the lung point. And the lung point is where the visceral and parietal pleura come together. Um, so we can see the air dissecting here in this part right here. It's dissecting right through there. And then right where that arrow is, is right where they come together. And that's what we're going to try to find with ultrasound. If we can find that, that's essentially pathognomonic for a pneumothorax. And then that tells us that the area where there was no lung sliding, that there was a pneumo there. So how do we do that? What we're going to do, well, let's get an idea. Let's look at it first here. So if we look at this video clip, what we see <clears throat> is we see intermittently the lung is coming down. So this area here is our head. And this is our feet over here. And what we can see is that as the person is taking a breath in, that that lung is filling up and it's sliding down right where that pleural line should be. And then when they breathe out, it goes away. And so we can see, especially on this side right here, let's get rid of that. That's not quite where I want it. Right there, there is no lung sliding. Now there's a little bit of movement of the probe but we can see that that comes and goes. There's no sliding, no sliding now. Lung's going to fill. There's some sliding. And so that's, we found a lung point in this case. So let's see. Uh, that's what we want to look for. Now, one thing we don't want to get that confused with is the diaphragm. So the diaphragm is a false positive of a lung point if you're not using good technique. So when you get close to the diaphragm, whether it be anteriorly, or laterally, you need to make sure your depth's appropriate so you can appreciate whether you're seeing liver or consolidated lung or um, a pneumothorax and a lung point. So just be careful of that when you're getting down around that fourth or fifth rib space. Um, make sure you're paying attention to whether this could be a lung point or your diaphragm. And maybe change your depth, increase it like we see here. We can see all the way down to the spine line and appreciate that that is actually the diaphragm. So how do we diagnose this? So normally, uh, especially in traumas, we're going to have our patient lying supine. We're going to go ahead and take that probe, and I personally put my probe, um, probe marker towards the head. And what we see here is um, 
when we do that, I can see ribs on both sides. Now, some people like to go parallel with the ribs. I prefer to go perpendicular. That way I can see a couple rib spaces and really appreciate and evaluate each rib space. You can use a linear probe, which many of these examples are going to be, or you can use a curvilinear probe. Either one is fine. But if you look at this first part and you don't see lung sliding, so here we can see our rib right here in red. And then we have our pleural line right here in blue. And that pleural line, let me get rid of that so you can appreciate it. There is no sliding along that. There's no movement along that at all. And so this is absence of lung sliding. And so when that absence of lung sliding is present, what we're going to do is we're going to start sliding lateral. I keep it in that same rib space and we're going to slide lateral just like we see here. So now we're not anteriorly, we're anterior lateral and we're going to evaluate as we drag across and we're going to have to stop and stop moving our hand so we can really pay attention to see if there's any movement. Now, once again, just to clarify, we have ribs here, or let's take that off. In red, we're going to have rib and rib. And then in blue, we're going to have our plural line. And it's right there. And there's no movement. I'm going to take that off so you can appreciate it. No lung sliding along that. And so, once again, we're going to continue to slide lateral. And what we're going to eventually look for and hopefully find is our lung point. So right now, we would be able to see if that beam comes in right here, it's going to come in and it's going to catch it right at that lung point right so if we come back out let's look at this so now we see a lung point now what we can see here is that once again um, we'll try to move with this video but right here we have our rib and then we have our plural line right along this okay i'm going to take that off for a second but what we're going to see is that this side is not moving in blue right there but this in green has sliding. Let me take those off so you can see that. So now what we see is that exact point where we see that right here is called our lung point and that's where the visceral and parietal pleura are touching each other. And then all this space up here in blue is our essentially where our normal thorax is at. Now once again remember we're gonna try to make sure that's not our diaphragm and in this case it's not because remember this side over here is our head, and this is our feet over here. I'll put an F for feet. So this case, we are having connection lower down towards the feet. Now that's not always the case. You could have it towards the head, which we see in this lung point. This is the one we saw earlier. It doesn't matter which way it's moving on your screen. It could be um, coming down from under a rib and you see that lung point, or it could be uh, like we saw in the last example, midway in the rib space. But the important thing is to know that the lung point is where the visceral and parietal pleura come together. And that is going to be pathognomonic for a pneumothorax. Now, remember, the absence of lung sliding does not equal pneumothorax. What you got to do is you got to start looking for that lung point. And that's the way um, I look for them personally. If you guys have other ways that you've looked at it, feel free to comment to benefit others. Um, and uh, I'm happy to answer any questions I possibly can. Feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or comment below. Um, hope that this is helpful to you and let me know if you have any other questions.